Okay, hi, I'm Gian Park. I too am at Washburn Row High in Kansas. And this lecture is going to be about the politics this ad. So before I talk about the actual politics this ad, I'm gonna talk about the utility of it. The politics this ad should be every two ends best friend. Um, whether it's a court staff, a Congress app, or an executive app, there's almost always a way you can spin a compelling link story. And there's almost always an app that oh, almost every app links to it. And so the politics to said is like, you're in a troublesome place and it's the thing that you can go to to get you out of that hole. But also if you don't get the best judge, a lot of judges like the politics to said. Um, for example, there is a debate at Michigan that I'm, I was friends with one of them and they got the most policy judge ever. And they had been going for like a one-off case strategy most of the tournament. And the other team was reading a fracking app that definitely linked to politics. And so he talked to me about it. And so instead of going for the instead of going for the K, the 2AC spent four and a half minutes on it. They kicked the K and went for the politics to set and the state's counter plan. And they actually had a pretty good debate. And so depending on what kind of situation you're in or what kind of arguments you make, the politics to set has still a lot of utility. And so who and what is the politics to set? Well, first and the most important thing when it comes to the politics to set is telling a story. I can't reiterate this enough, and I'll say it a lot throughout this presentation, but intuitively the politics this ad doesn't make a lot of sense. So if you can't string all the parts together and tell a good story, then the dissent falls apart really quickly. Like imagine someone that doesn't do debate is just like asking questions, just like, why does someone care about the plan so much? Why would they vote against like infrastructure if they like love it and they're gonna vote for it like right now? Like why is infrastructure that important? What, where have you said that it's going to pass? Like who flips after the plan? Like all of these logical fallacies and holes that people will poke at become like re a really big deal if you can't tell your story. Coupled with other app arguments, if you can't tell a cohesive story, your strategy is wrecked. And so storytelling is super important. And we'll, I'll like expand on that a little later. Second is that most of this lecture will be in context of the infrastructure bill, which is the current politics bill. And so when I refer to things such as like the internal link part or the uniqueness stuff, it'll usually be, it'll almost always be in context of this infrastructure bill. Third is political capital. I'll expand on this a lot because I think it's kind of important a little later, but you should look through most of this lecture through an idea that political capital exists and probably has to do with some part of it. Political capital is the idea of like a political currency on like, uh, like that, that the government uses. My I, different senators have PC with Biden and Biden has PC to make sure that he can get things done. If he loses that PC, it makes him much, much harder to do his job and try and get the bills and initiatives that he wants to pass. Fourth is Biden. Everything has to do with Biden. Your uniqueness evidence is all about how why Biden is pushing for the bill and he's going to get people to vote for it. The plan has to be signed off by Biden. Biden chooses his agenda. So everything that he wants to push and talk about in the Senate, et cetera, they're usually driven by, by what Biden wants to do. And lastly is key players. Your dissent should never focus on people like some far right Republican that is never gonna vote for the infrastructure bill, nor should it focus on people like AOC or Bernie Sanders because the people all the way out on the margins are going to vote for the bill are going to vote against the bill no matter what. Your link argument and your arguments should focus on moderates, such as Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, or Lisa Murkowski, or more, or like Mitt Romney, who has gone down the more the middle of the aisle. Moderates are where you're going to make the most compelling story. They're the people on the fence of whether they're going to vote. That's usually what your uniqueness cards are about. And so if you can get down which senators are going to flip and which moderates are important for your dissent, then your dissent will come together pretty quickly. So the structure of the dissent. Like any decide, there's uniqueness. Politics is a little weirder because uniqueness can depend on what kind of decide you're reading or what you want your argument to be. First, the first part of it is that the bill is going to pass now. You need a card that says that infrastructure or like stimulus or whatever the bill is, is going to pass now and gain 60 votes. And I know that might be a high threshold to, to reach. And so a lot of debaters and judges have just been reading cards that say that uniqueness is in a positive direction. Most of the cards in the current infrastructure file don't definitively say that Manchin and everyone else is going to vote for it, but it says that Manchin is going to debate and will fall in line or that there's momentum for passage. And so as long as you win that there's a pretty positive trend towards passage, you'll be in a pretty good point in uniqueness, especially because something like PC will resolve the other concerns. The other part of it is unity now. 
The argument is that Democrats are unified to pass something. This will little, matter a little bit more if your dissent is in context of reconciliation, which is a budgetary process where only 50 Democrats are needed to vote. So uni unity now focuses on people such as progressives on the right and moderates such as Manchin and Cinema who are going to vote. But altogether, as long as you win, there's a positive direction, you're in a good place for the debate. Second is the link. I'll do this on a later slide. But the idea of the link is just like the plan is unpopular, it starts fights, it takes PC, it takes too much time, it gets horse traded, or something that causes a trade-off or a disruption in the current political process because of the plan. And so that'll stop passage of infrastructure. Third and fourth is just like the internal link impact insurance case. Blank bill is key to warming, economy, China, or whatever you want the impact to be. But I'll also talk about the utility of this a little later. But that's just like the backbone of the dissent. So the link, this is the most important part of the politics is that because it's usually the weakest and where most teams will press on about, but absent a link or a pretty good link, your dissent falls apart. So I've given you a list of five uh, link arguments. Um, and after I go through them, you should rank them on what you think is best to worst, and then I'll give you my list. Um, the first one is bipartisanship or partisanship. This link is that in the SQUO, Republicans and Democrats are getting along. But the plan would cause a shift in between the GOP and Democrats and start tons and tons of fighting in between them. This link, for example, was on the CGR link where many there was many cards that said that Republicans would backlash to Democrats because they did not like the plan. Second is democratic unity. Dem unity is the, similar to bipartisanship, except it only has to do with Democrats. So in context of a reconciliation bill, it's the idea that there will be a bridge in between the Democrats and the, uh, the progressive Democrats and the moderates because they don't like something about the plan. An example of this is later on the CJR topic, when stimulus came around, there are many pretty good link cards that said that moderates did not want to be labeled soft on crime and then want, want to be associated with people such as AOC because Manchin and Cinema are in much, much red leaning states. And so it's the idea that there's a rift in the Democratic Party alone and Republicans are irrelevant for this dissent story. Third is floor time slash focus. This link argument is that the plan would take tons of floor time resources and focus away from the current infrastructure bill towards a different bill and that would halt passage or delay passage. Fourth is horse trading. This link argument is that the plan would get horse traded with something else. The best example I can think of for this is on the immigration topic in which there are some link cards that said that an immigration policy if passed would allow the GOP to pass their wall bill because it was horse traded. It was an eye for an eye. Lastly is PC. This argument is that the plan would cost Biden's political capital because of backlash. He'd have to lobby and labor for the plan. And so it sap his political capital needed for infrastructure and his PC would be used on something else. So I don't know if you can pause this. I gave this lecture in lab, but I forgot to record. So you all can probably like pause or like, just like think about it for a few seconds and what you rank them, but I'm just gonna move on. This is my list of what I think the best links are. This is obviously not a set in stone thing. It changes by dissed, by person, by judge. But with the evidence set that is out and the current like dissed, I think PC is the best argument. Because PC is that like sort of sweeping link argument that's pretty easy to make. If their plan is unpopular, then it's pretty easy to make this link argument. PC resolves a lot of the other issues in the debate. And so I think PC is the best link argument right now for a few reasons. First, the cards on this are like pretty good. Most of the uniqueness cards, especially because none of them say they are definitely going to pass, are in context of Biden being able to persuade different senators to fall in line and being able to like twist their arms, convince them, or make concessions. But that's all contingent on Biden having enough political capital to do the actions he wants. Second, I think that it is easy, it's a pretty easy way to spin that if it is true that the plan has backlash and then would upset lobbies, et cetera then Biden would have to spend PC pushing the plan through the passage through the passage process. And so it would take a decent amount of PC that would trade off with infrastructure. This link argument becomes more persuasive if you're able to win the other parts of PC, such as PC true, PC is finite, and all the other little like nicks, nooks and crannies, but I'll talk about that a little later. So I think this one is the best link argument. Second, but kind of close, is democratic unity. This argument is pretty good because of right now the reconciliation process. It was really good with stimulus because stimulus only needed 50 senators. It's like, okay right now because the second part of two track requires 50 senators, but just like Democrats do not wanna be seen as too environmentally strong or like too environmentally progressive. 
And like, think, like because that'll hurt like the agriculture or coal industry. And so if it hurts some sort of industry that's key to a senator such as Manchin or Cinema, then like this link argument gets pretty good and it is in close running with the PC. The third one is bipartisanship. I think this link is okay. I, the reason I think it's not the best is like Democrats and Republicans are like almost never going to get along. And so this link argument will usually not get you anywhere. But the first part of the infrastructure bill right now is contingent on bipartisanship. And so this link is a little better than it usually is. And not only that, it's also good because it's easy to establish. Almost everything will make Republicans and Democrats disagree. Things like water policies, if like people, if they like hurt some industry, Republicans will be upset. And then like Democrats will be like all for it. And so like this link argument is like pretty easy to establish. I think if you can make the other link arguments, you're in a better position, but it's not a bad one to be in. Fourth is horse trading. I think this link argument is bad in context of most dissads. Most dissads don't have the cards necessary to make this argument. You will not find a card unless you're like a phenomenal researcher and like someone writes this card that says that one water policy will trade off and cause a different bill. And this argument usually doesn't have the best F set, doesn't make sense. And so I would shy away from making this argument. The only way you can go for this dissat is if you have the cards that make sense. Last year, there was a mens rea dissat that was like an okay card, but like I would rather go for stimulus or infrastructure over mens rea any day. Um, on the immigration bill, there's a wall ho or there's a horse training dissat, but I would like still rely on the other link arguments and go for other dissats, and I would be in a much better position as a two in rather than going for a horse training dissat. The last link argument is floor time. I think this argument is a non-starter and should probably never be made. Now, the reason floor time doesn't work is like, one, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Just like, yes, the plan will have to be debated, but that doesn't mean it makes passage impossible. Like at worst, the infrastructure bill and the response to the plan will get passed like two months later or like a few weeks or months or whatever. But like no dissent has like a this timing key right now warrant. Floor time is only good in context of like a shutdown dissent in which timing is necessary for the dissent to be winnable. But absent like a good timing warrant, floor time doesn't make sense. Second, they usually get you in more trouble than needed. Because if you open say a floor time link, then this argument then is open to thumpers. The idea of floor time is just like, Congress is too focused on infrastructure, so it cannot focus on other bills. But if the 2EC in one era is just like, voting rights, police reform, China bill, evictions, and just lists a whole bunch of things, it's bound that one of those gets you in trouble, and those all do take floor time. And so like the plan would just be like, the plan would just like be shielded by a whole bunch of thumpers. Lastly is intuitively, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, yes, Congress does have to debate both the plan and infrastructure. Congress is not a monolith. And so that doesn't mean that they can't spend their time on two bills. It's not like senators are like, one brain, one issue at a time, like they can think about multiple things and debate about other things. And like, it's empirically proven that they can debate multiple issues. And so like this, this argument, link argument usually doesn't make a lot of sense. The one reason I can see a team making this argument is like the one in ours spamming a whole bunch of link arguments and a whole bunch of link cards, and the one error might drop it. But the higher level you get, usually the one error would not drop. It. So PC, I think this is a really important part of the current dissent. And so I'm going to talk about it a little. First, what is political capital? Well, it comes in a lot of different forms. These are all a few examples that are the same thing. Things like swaying senators, buying votes, private persuasion, arm twisting. Those are all like prevalent examples of political capital. If Biden has political capital, he is able to sway certain senators and buy their votes. An example of this is during stimulus. Biden would have closed door meetings and have meetings with Manchin and try and buy different Democrat, uh, Dem Democratic senator votes. He would do this by trying to persuade them with like trading off or saying that you'll get this or saying that like, oh, like we have enough stuff and like and we're trying to convince Manchin. And so PC is per, like, like somewhat proven because he does have to convince senators to vote for bills. The sort of second aspect of this is pre public pressure. This is also proven by stimulus. Biden was a, and Kamala were able to create public pressure for Manchin to vote for stimulus because they would play ads and they, were, they would lobby inside of West Virginia for him to vote for the bill. And so this is all contingent on Biden having popularity and people not backlashing against him, which all lies in his credibility. If you are a credible president that has somewhat popular, some, some sort of popularity, then you will, able, you will have the mandate to pass the bills that you want, or you'll at least have the mandate to push for the bills that you want. 
which means that as long as you are a credible president that has popularity, you will have PC. But the plan would obviously change that because the plan is unpopular, would cause pressure from lobbyists, would have public backlash and senator backlash, and then so it would deck your credibility. And that would put you in a pretty bad place and not have a lot of political capital. And so you would no longer be able to push for the things that you want. Lastly is agenda setting. Biden sets his agenda, gets to choose what he wants to debate about. And so if he has PC, that is much more easy to talk about the issues that he wants. This is proven such as ACA, in which Obama was able to make his debates about the ACA and make some people vote for it. And so broadly, PC is the idea that you're able to push for the initiatives and the bills that you want, and they will be successful. In context of the dissat or the link argument, the idea is that in the SQUO, Biden has enough PC to push the senators and the issues that are in line to smooth over those and pass the bill. But the link would cause a backlash and that would sap his political capital because senators would get upset and he would no longer have the PC necessary to pass the bill on, on like the bill I have. So here are some other thoughts that I have about the dissat that you should think about. First is that infrastructure is good. It is like the, G the Jesus and like the liberal like wish list that all the GOP has been complaining about because infrastructure quite literally solves for almost every issue off the top of your head. If you just look at infrastructure files, the turns case arguments are phenomenal. It's like a few billion to salmon, a, a, like lots of money to natives. There's billions of dollars going to methane and it solves climate, China, the economy, maybe even solves like the grid, cyber and food. And so the cards that say that infrastructure are good for blank issue makes pretty good turns case and impact arguments, which is why I think this dissat is uniquely good. And if you win that infrastructure is like the status quo counter plan that like one outweighs because of some big impact, but also resolves some part of the app, then you're like in a pretty good position in the tune art to be like, look, even if you're questionable on the link and unique display, infrastructure is like this godsend that solves everything. So you should not risk it. And so like this politics is that is like in a, is like better than most because of the turns case and impact arguments. Second is whether courts and executive link. I think that both of these apps are able to link if you're able to, in like some cases. Um, some people just think that like court links are a non-starter, but like with the right F set and the right story, you can convince a judge that courts do link. First, courts, even if the ruling itself does not link, some part of the AF will have to do with Congress. Like enforcement, if courts does something, the courts don't have the tooth, the teeth to like enforce it. So Congress probably has to do something in reaction to the court ruling to make sure that is implemented and enforced properly. Second is that the court AF would still probably upset some, upset some lobbyists. If it's an AF like WOTUS or public trust, businesses, ag lobbies and other lobbies would definitely get upset. And like, it's a logical extension that many people would be like, yo, like Congress do something about this. Then so there are convincing ways to say that in reaction, lobbyists would push Congress for the plan. Third is that courts don't link courts, don't really assume the court anymore. The court is politicized. We deb debate about the courts all the time. People like the recent nominees going in have made the courts more into the spotlight. And so there is a way that there is backlash to the courts. And you have to be like kind of tricky in tying it to Biden, but it's possible. Second, does, does the executive? I think this argument is a little easier to make. The cards are pretty good on both sides, but it's still Biden's agency, Biden's administration, and his executive doing the AF. And so, like, executive apps are like a little easier to link. Um, and like, you're in an okay place. Like, obviously, like an AF, like MPA is like, oh, we are like one agency AF, and so we definitely don't link. But like. An AF like MPAs would restrict so many commercial and business activities on certain waters that like lobbyists would definitely backlash. And so like their like agency doesn't link argument doesn't assume like the magnitude of like people being upset. This also comes down to personal preference. Like I'm still in a weird area. I'm not sure whether I'd rather go for like the abortion dissent for the courts AF or whether I'd rather try and string together a link argument for politics. And so like, it really depends on what you think is better for you, your ad set, and whether you think you can tell a story. But that all also is contingent on you being able to tell a good story. Third is plan specific links. These are good. Judges like them, and they make your storytelling easier. In a world where you are able to read a link about the plan, it makes your like backlash arguments, specific senator arguments, much much easier. Like last year, teams would just read CJR links in response to like forensic science or like cyber or like weed apps. 
And like, sure, things like divestment are unpopular, but that doesn't mean that the plan is unpopular. So reading links to the plans makes your life a lot, lot easier. And like, even if you don't reach the threshold for like the fracking app of having a card about like the commission they create, if you have a card about fracking broadly, you're still able to spin it in your favor. Then so just having like a link about like the subject of the plan is still good. Fourth, storytelling. While like stellar storytelling in the one in R and two in R is important, storytelling is also important in places such as CrossX. You have to be really good at answering these questions or your dissat falls to logical fallacies pretty quickly. For example, we had a debate where we were AF. We were reading the dams AF and the one in C read the dissat. And I, the first question was just like, who flips after the plan? And like, they just like listed their generic like mansion and cinema flip. And I was just like, do they have dams in their states? And she was like, I don't know. And like, there's no reason that mansion and cinema get upset after the plan because they don't care about dams. And so depending on the AF, you should find senators that would get upset. In context of the dams app, it would be people such as the senators in Washington who have big dams, or like other democratic states who would be perceived as job killers and have dams. For something such as the MPAs app, you just have to find a democratic state with a big fishing lobby. For ag apps, it would be the corn belt. And for like fracking apps, it would just be specific senators such as Manchin and Cinema who would be hurt by like the coal and industry. And so like, you have to be really good and make sure that the AF doesn't get like gotcha moments in cross about like who flips, like why would they flip, who cares, et cetera. Then to also make sure this that looks really good if you're able to like BS and grandstand your way out. I don't recommend this in all debates, but like I had a judge tell me once that like, if you can't think of a Senator that would flip, you should just have like an out there Senator off the top of your mind. And then they're like, who flips? You should like name a Senator from like Minnesota or something or like a random state who like no one's gonna know about. And then the other team's gonna be like, oh shoot, they like know what they're talking about. And so like being able to hype up your evidence is like really important. This is also true because usually your politics evidence is not as good as you say it is. So spinning it in your favor is also very beneficial. Lastly is that the politics is that is your friend no matter what, but especially if you're lazy or you go to a small school. Before a tournament, you just need to cut like seven cards for uniqueness and then just like need to cut like a link to the plan in pre-round prep. You need like six uniqueness cards, like an answer to thumpers, which usually aren't that good. Then like pre-round, spend like 10 minutes looking for some politics links. And like, it's like not that hard to do any of this. Like the research is like pretty shallow. And then so if you're lazy or go to a small school, politics is usually your best friend. And it also shows that even if you're a K team, sometimes reading the politics is that is good. Like many, um, I don't know if you all watched Clara's lecture about cutting ass, but many ass against the K are also bad against policy arguments. Like um, the example I gave earlier, they read a fracking app that banned fracking and just read a whole bunch of K preamps. The 2NC spent four and a half to five minutes on the K and barely any on the politics to set. And like the app definitely links to the politics to set. And so like you're in a pretty good position if you just win the impact level. Or like last year, people read apps about like harm reduction or like releasing a whole bunch of people for like mandatory minimums or something against the K. Like those apps definitely link to the K or definitely link to politics. And so like you'll hit a policy team by surprise if you like read the politics to set at, like in conjunction with the K or instead of the K. And so like politics is like a pretty good tool to have. Um, so AF answers. Um, I've rated these on what I think they are. This is also dependent on what you like your 2A are to be, the judge you have, and what like you think your evidence is good for. And the first is won't slash will pass. I don't think this argument is very good. First is that no card ever definitively says that infrastructure will not pass or whatever. But on the reversal, no card ever says that it will definitively pass. And so this argument isn't pretty good because of your evidence. Two, it definitely doesn't assume the link. Like an argument that says that it will definitely pass doesn't assume something as unpopular as the app happening. And so like that doesn't really matter. Three, won't pass arguments are resolved by PC. Just like the won't pass arguments are usually just like pay for or like some small issue exists in debates. So like they won't pass it. But like your uniqueness evidence on the negative says that PC is able to resolve different issues and will have people fall in line. And so like usually if you lose the PC debate, then won't pass arguments aren't really good. And also the last reason I don't think this is a very strategic is like a smart one in R will like read more uniqueness cards than a one AR. And so you'll be out carded by the end of this debate and most of those cards won't be in your favor. And so like, you're usually not in the best position to go for this argument. The second argument is that the plan is popular and won't take PC. I think this argument is pretty good. First is that if you win the plan is popular, 
then you're in a good position because people won't backlash. It puts you in like a set to like link turn the diss ad. And like broadly, the AF evidence will be better. You've done your AF research. Your cards are usually more specific to the affirmative than the negative. And so like, and the 1AR or the 2AC just like gets to spam a whole bunch of like plan popular cards. And like, usually you'll read the, like the same amount of cards of the plan. Yours will be better. And so this debate usually favors the affirmative. This in conjunction with like a won't take PC argument, either because the plan is popular or because a different lobby pushes for it, puts you in a good position. The RFS AF and the agricultural subsidies AF had cards that said that the oil lobby and ag lobby would push for the plan. So there's no reason that Biden would have to definitively push for it. Third is PC fakes, that's compartmentalization. I may be in the minority for this, but I know some people do agree that PC fake is a good argument. Um, the cards are pretty good in context of Biden, the negative will usually just in response read like a sweeping card from like a PC study from like the 1990s that doesn't assume Biden that's like PC is real empirically. But like who cares? Those cards aren't about Biden. Our evidence like are also credible. Let's talk about Biden and say that in context of Biden, PC does not work. And so like these cards usually make sense. And like intuitively, like PC really like senators vote based on their constituencies and whether they're going to get them in a good place for re-election. Like Manchin is going to go vote for infrastructure if it's going to help his economy, and he's not going to vote for it if it hurts his coal industry. And like polarization probably matters a lot, lot more. Like Republicans and Democrats do not agree on anything. There's no way in like God's green earth that like on a big bill that the Republicans, all Republicans end up voting for, or like enough Republicans end up voting for. So like PC fake is usually like a convincing argument, and coupled with like playing popular or some other. Argument. The second part of this is compartmentalization. Congress is not a monolith. They can debate different bills. Most teams read this like program card. I think it's pretty good and says like the word water infrastructure. And like people can debate water infrastructure, get upset about one bill, and then also get upset about a different bill or like vote for a different bill. This is proven because Congress passes different bills and doesn't pass different bills all the time. The negative argument will usually be like doesn't assume the magnitude of the link and like PC is true, so this is irrelevant. Then like Maybe those are convincing. I think this debate leans affirmatively. Fourth is winners win. I am not the biggest fan of this argument. I think it's okay. Um, some teams like Egan, who like you get like seen the demo debate on, think this debate argument is like phenomenal. I think this argument doesn't make sense, all, like really, because like wins don't really lead to other wins. Like try it. Like sometimes there are like some examples about like why wins lead to wins, but in the example game, you'll loosely lose. Like stimulus was a win that doesn't solidify passage for infrastructure. Um, the ACA was a win for Obama. Then the GOP was just like, nah, you don't get to pass anything else. And like wins usually don't lead to other wins. And like, sure, like, and like you have to also have to win that PC is fake. The reason I think this argument is good is like usually the AF gets to read more cards about it. Their cards are more specific to winners win. And like it's a little more convincing under Biden. There are cards that say that if Biden is able to pass a plan by 60 votes, then that would show a singular bipartisanship and that will give him the mandate to do other things. And so like the plan, because it's a congressional bill, would have to take at least 10 Republican votes. And so like that would show a, like a legislative mastery by Biden and that would give him PC. And so like that argument is like, okay. The second part of winner's win is just like the plan is popular. But that means you just have to win that the plan is popular in the first place. And I just think you just go for like plan popular and like go for like a different argument with that instead of win winners winning. Um, five thumpers. I think these arguments usually aren't very good. Most teams will just like list a whole bunch of bills. Those do not meet the threshold of a thumper. If you're negative, the threshold of a thumper has to like meet the test that is like relevant right now. It is controversial and Biden is pushing for it. And it's top of the agenda. If it does not meet those categories, then it is not a thumper. And so like in the demo debate, Egan was like evictions and like evictions was like co maybe controversial, but like Biden wasn't pushing for it. Like it wasn't as important as infrastructure. He didn't offset infrastructure for it. And so if you're not winning that it interrupts with infrastructure, then these thumpers usually don't make a lot of sense. And the only utility in my mind of a thumper is to get out of a floor time argument and then thumpers get pretty good. Six, fiat or intrinsicness. I think this argument is bad. I know some judges don't actually vote on reverse intrinsicness because they think this argument is so bad and egregious and bad for the negative. And so I don't even think it's worth making this argument. First, on a theoretical level, like the politics dissent is good. And so it's key to negative flexibility. It's good for education. It's the only negative generic. 
And so like obviating the politics is that puts the neg in a pretty good position. And so theoretically, most of this stuff goes negative. But second, it doesn't make a lot of sense intuitively. Like politics is a process, not an event. And so in a world in which like the plan is passed, this still has to be debated, voted on, and go through the whole congressional process. And it's not like fiat is so immediate snap of the finger after the, like in a few seconds, just like the plan is done. Like that's just not how Congress works. And so like on an IRL level, like this argument is just false. The only area I think fiat makes sense is against rider disads or horse trading disads, because like those do have some theoretical objections and make a little bit more sense in context of the fiat theory debate. But like against like normal politics is like infrastructure, you should not be making this argument. Lastly is like answers to specific scenarios, whether it's impact terms or internal link presses. I actually think that internal link presses are much, much more beneficial um, or like sort of impact defense like questions. Let's look at climate, for example. Like the idea that like one climate bill that's probably gonna get watered down, doesn't have a lot of initiatives in it, like probably doesn't, won't solve all of warming nor the tail end risks. And so like just asking questions like what is necessary? Why would countries follow on? What's in the bill that's good? Like all of these questions are like good questions to ask. And most politics does have to falter at the internal link level too. The China scenario, for example, like why is investing in like something that goes like choo-choo and like, like if like broadband and stuff, key to like things like hypersonics and broad military primacy. Like none of these arguments like make intuitive sense. And you like, when usually when you like have like a question that's just like, this is stupid. Like, why would this like matter? Like those questions like actually usually do make sense. And the economy example, for example, the infrastructure key to economy cards are good, but like none of the cards say that infrastructure is unique to the recovery. If you win that there's a recovery now, which like the economy is like recovering robustly right now, then there's no need for the infrastructure to set. And so like, so usually the stuff doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, but also like internal link presses are good, especially if you're gonna go for like a link turn or like go for other arguments, but there are also impact turns. I think these are okay. I think the oil turn in response to the infrastructure warming scenario, there's like a good place to be, especially if you can win that the warming defense arguments. I think the China bad cards, or just the China good cards are pretty good, but, and like the inflation turn is like, okay, the negative will probably read more cards than you and it'll be a bad position. But in a world where I can either link turn or impact turn, like the politics is that as a 2A, I would always go for the link turn and I would almost never impact turn unless you're like your AF is like so overwhelmingly unpopular and you're like just getting like booted on the link turn debate. But like, usually I'd like, like politics arguments favor like the political process arguments rather than the impact arguments. Um, the last part of this is just like researching politics. I was really bad at this, my novice and sophomore year. And like, even like the beginning part of my junior year, but like I found a few sites. First is Politico and The Hill, right? Phenomenal articles for politics. This is usually where I start my politics research and then I branch off to other places such as like random Google searches like CNBC, CNN, Washington Post, et cetera. Like these places, right? Like usually the best politics cards, AF and Nick. Second is like a list of authors. These authors write phenomenal politics cards, but also you'll just like see them a lot. And so like, you'll be able to like see cards that other people are gonna cut. Like Draco Pramuk, Jim Tankersley, Ed Kilgore, Jordan Kearney, Maureen Levine, all write a lot of politics cards are usually pretty up to date. And so like when you're cutting politics cards, I'd go look at their like um, like writing profile and like look at articles they've written. Then they've usually written something recent. And like, you'll also be able to like find uniqueness cards that other neg teams will read. And so like these list of authors are usually authors that are pretty common, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't look for other authors. Like obviously other authors write good cards too. Like some authors like write every like every few months and like release a good card. And so like it is not exclusive to these authors. Um, next is search terms. I would look up specific senators when you're looking for uniqueness, like mansion and infrastructure, or like cinema and infrastructure. And so like this will make your neatness argument a little bit better. In context of PC disads, I would put in quotations things like political capital, laser focus, arm twisting, or like other phrases that like seem like PC matters. And so that'll also put your infrastructure, like uniqueness cards in a good place and shows that he's expending PC. And like lastly, just like looking up infrastructure Biden, like the first few cards that come up are like usually pretty good. This is also especially true because you know, if like most judges would rather have like one really good politics card that's like long rather than like a neg team that just like spam like 10, like two sentence bad cards. And so like 
you, I, my, politics research is not only a question of depth, but also breadth. And so you need like a few cards that are like really, really good that put you in a good position. But you also need like a handful of cards that you can just like spread and like make it look like the numbers are in your way. And so the researching politics can like go both ways. Lastly is don't shy away from small media. I know a lot of people will just like go to like CNN, Washington Post and all like the big stream mainstream news sources. But sometimes good politics cards come from like small areas. There was like a link card that was like pretty good last year from Clean Technica called Sen like by Senseba. And like, like this card didn't really like, like wasn't really credible. It was from a small place, but said a lot of good things. And like last year before a few tournaments, I would like find cards from like a Pennsylvania news source and like a lawyer, like a lawyer group. And they write pretty good politics cards. I think it was like Pensbury or something. But like broadly, not only is big media good, but like small media sources also write pretty good politics cards. So like, I wouldn't shy away from like these, those media sources either. And with that, um, you all can discord me or email me questions. Um, if this goes up on YouTube, uh, like, sorry, your questions will probably just have to be asked by somewhere else. But and if you're in lab, then you can just ask those questions to me. Um, I don't think there's anything else. I think the only other thing I can be, I can like give about the politics to said is you should be careful about which part of Congress it's talking about. We had a debate, we won, like luckily because the two AR didn't exploit it, but the two NC and one AR cards were all about the Senate and the one AR and two, two AC cards were about the house. And so also when you're researching politics, you should make sure you have cards about like different senators, but also like the house, the Senate and Biden to cover your bases. And with that, I think the politics aside is like a good negative strategy. Everyone should be able to go for it. And that's it, thanks.